I was at my favorite thrift store this week, and I got a couple good deals. And one of them was this uh, Hydrolite Zip-Away Dry Stuff Sack. Uh, I got it for two bucks, and it's still on the, in the package. And uh, I think it's regular ten ninety five. And you, you just you just can't go wrong there. And it got me to thinking about stuff sacks. And so I want to do a little video in praise of the stuff sack. Now you could go back in time all the way to like the Possibles bag when uh, uh, Daniel Boone and, and folks like that with the front lock rifles were, were roaming the, uh, the uh, country. But for me, the granddaddy of stuff sacks is right here. This is the Alice Pack waterproof bag. It says here, waterproof clothing bag. Now we called this a Willie Peter bag. WP waterproof Willie Peter. And it was just, this was your, your, your WP bag, your Willie Peter bag. And uh, it was really made for your sleeping bag. But since back in the day we carried the Alice Pack, it also was kind of um, made it up to it and even if you weren't carrying a sleeping bag very often you would put this inside the Alice pack before you loaded anything else and use it to line your Alice pack especially if there was going to be any water involved water crossings or just a lot of rain depending on where you were and um, and you would use it that way so you'd see it both ways uh, a, a sleeping bag bag sleeping bag bag sleeping bag bag or a uh, just general purpose stuff sack for everything that went into your Alice pack. And it comes with instructions. And you can still find lots of these in pretty good shape. Uh, make sure they don't stink. But you can find lots of these in pretty good shape at the surplus stores and the online surplus stores. And the, the daughter to the granddaddy bag is this bag. And this bag, liner field pack, actually was made for kind of the, the same purpose as this. It was made for just holding gear. It's, it's, it's an honest to God stuff sack, but it also fit really well into the three pockets on both the large and the medium Alice pack. So very often you would see them sh people shove that into the pocket and then load it that way. And there's Birdie. She's got to get into every video these days. But you saw it both ways. You would see people just stuff stuff in here and tie it up and um, and load it into the main bag, or you would see this line, those pockets. And that's something I want to talk about. Scoop, Birdie. Both of these came with a two-cord system, and they give you instructions right here on folding the top over so that you can get a good seal and then tying it up, uh, you know, just with a regular old tie like you would a pair of, pair of shoes. And so this, at least in the military that I knew, are the originators of the stuff sack and the next stuff sack that I have a lot of history with is the Crown Royal bag I do not know the origins of this I do not know if it carried over into other services but in the Marine Corps the Crown Royal bag was a favored stuff sack uh, you would see it you know carrying people's uh, um, personal gear like their wallets and stuff or maybe money uh, you would keys stuff like that. You would see it carrying um, their shaving gear, and it, it's not that it was made really well for that. I mean, it's it's a cloth bag with a with a drawstring, so it's not like it's waterproof or anything like that. But it just was a traditional thing. And one thing that um, that I saw when I was in, uh, a tactics instructor at the School of Infantry, uh, Camp Geiger was that you carried, if you were an instructor, you carried your terrain model kit in a Crown Royal bag. Um, and I've done a video on the terrain model kit or the sand table kit, and I'm about to do another one, plug, plug, for, uh, for the terrain model kit, and I'll be talking about that again in an upcoming video. But the Crown Royal bag was just, I don't know, it was a Marine Corps thing, at least, at least when I was in. These days, there's all kinds of stuff sacks. And you can spend a lot of money on them, like this uh, granite gear, seal nylon, lighter than helium uh, bag. Or you can go to Walmart and get these, uh, I, think, I think they still sell them uh, three bags, uh, tiered sizes for, I don't know, five, six bucks, something like that. 
and doesn't matter to me where you go the walmart bags seem to last pretty long but the important thing is that you use stuff sacks when you're carrying a pack you want to be able to organize the stuff that goes in there and there's nothing better for organizing than to have different color bags different size bags representing and fitting what you need to go in there you don't want a giant bag for just a few items you don't want to use um too small a bag that you can't get the stuff in there and get it closed so the stuff's spilling out and if you can color code the bags then you go even better for knowing what you're grabbing when you're grabbing it and 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 not having to mess around too much i even go so far as to mark my bags uh, this is a bag left over from my my last hunting trip and i if you watched any of those videos about my my hunting preps is i mark most of my bags whether they're going into the pack or not so that i can just look at it and say okay that's that and i also uh in conjunction with using the the uh, stuff sacks i will have a a list of gear a gear list that's why they call it that and when i have a bag completely full of some kit i will mark it off and i seal it and then i know that i don't have to open that bag again and um, it really helps when you're organizing you know another thing you might want to look at is uh, mesh bags some things don't need to be in a, a solid bag some things don't need to be in a dry bag and that you can put them in a mesh bag which will um i don't know the thing i'm thinking of i i put in mesh bags is cooking gear because they'll get uh, a sooty from the fire and you can put them in a mesh bag of course you don't want to put it with stuff that you don't want getting dirty but once again that's what the bags are for if you've got socks in here they can be right next to your sooty uh, canteen cup or, or uh, mess cup and the soot doesn't translate because your socks are in that bag right there some items might come with their own bag and some items you may want to make a dedicated bag for and here's an example of both this is a sea to summit head net and it comes with its own bag and perfect size you don't have to i mean that's that's a hard size bag to find otherwise so that's a perfect perfect example there and this is my steak bag from when i was hiking on the appalachian trail and what i did here is i took a cheap walmart bag but i lined it with plastic so that i could put the steaks in there and not worry about them piercing the bag let me see if I can show you a little better. So I don't know how well you can see, but I took a light piece of plastic and um, cut it and folded it long way so that the fold is right there and kind of taped it into the, uh, to the stuff sack so that I had a fairly hard um, sided bag and hard ended bag so that these guys, these uh, aluminum, a couple of them might be titanium, but I think they're all aluminum. These aluminum stakes, when I put them in, would not pierce it. And I tell you what, I've had that thing for years, and it's still doing fine. Then there's stuff sacks that are made for your sleeping bag so that you can compress them down, and they're called compression bags. This is a good example of one. It's uh, got all kind of straps that are part of the bag, and then it's got a lid, and you can put your items in there and then you can and usually it's going to be a sleeping bag or some sort of sleeping gear and then you can pull straps and pull straps until you compress that bag down to the smallest smallest uh, shape and size that you can and there you see the stuff sack compression sack at work I've taken a load and compressed everything down to the smallest possible size and that really comes in handy for saving space in your pack some stuff sacks can be dry bags they're made with uh, sealed seams and they'll come with this little top that is kind of a not hard but hardish lid and you can uh, secure it so that it's water resistant maybe not waterproof but pretty darn water resistant and there's how that looks um, now I wouldn't go scuba diving with it but if you get dunked in a canoe your stuff's going to stay dry. Then there's even bags that kind of do both. They uh, are dry bags that compress. And 
I mean, now you're really getting into specialty stuff here. So as you can see, I got my gear in a stuff sack that is a dry bag and a compression bag. And I can get that pretty, pretty darn small and not worry about it getting wet. And that leads us back to this new bag that I just picked up, which is a, a large bag that can be zipped up when it's not in use and made much, much smaller, like so. Now I've got a pretty darn large bag that I can use when I don't need it. I can close it back down into this little clamshell and it takes up a lot less space in my pack. And that also is a dry bag. So in conclusion, the point of this little video is make use of stuff sacks, whether they be dry bags or compression bags or just regular old sacks. Color coding and marking them so that you can find your gear, you can keep your gear organized, and your pack is just going to be that much better uh, when it comes to putting your gear in, knowing where to put it, and knowing where to find it. Hey, thanks for watching.